Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. We're live at NRB and Kevin Sorbo, Hercules himself, is with us in Nashville. He's got three new movies to promote. You're going to love this. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. Today we are live in Nashville at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention, and we have right here in the studio one of your fan favorites, certainly my wife's fan favorite, Hercules himself is <laughs> Kevin Sorbo is a, a world famous actor. Welcome to the program, it's Kevin. Good to be here. Now I know I, you said wrote Dr. Chaps because no one's pronounced your last <laughs> name. <laughs> Klingenschmidt. Klingenschmidt has a German name. Had, well, I Isn't joke that? with people as Japanese and they say, Really? I'm like, no, it's German. <laughs> no, it's German. <laughs> but we came in 1826, so I've lost my accent. Really? Yeah. I've lost wow, so no you're what, gener what generation? Maybe like six or seven? Seventh, seventh generation. Yeah, I'm, farmers I'm, from I'm Western second Europe. from Norway. Norway, Norwegian. Sorbo. Joe Pesci, when I first, uh, Joe's been a friend for 30 years. When I first met Joe on the golf course, he said, Sorbo, what kind of name is Sorbo? Because he puts in his own wording, of course. Yeah. And I said, well, it's Norwegian. He goes, no, 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 in's in a vowel, you're Italian. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sounds good. Yeah. So I'm excited because, um, uh, let me just remind my audience, mm -hmm. if, in case you've never met this guy, he starred in 64 films. The recent films are all Christian, but he started out mm -hmm. as Hercules back when, you know, She-Ra and, and Xena Warrior no, Princess. No, 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 and, yeah, yeah, you gotta start with Hercules. I'm interrupted. Am I Hercules, mixing metaphors Hercules now? started it all. We were the only one on the air doing that kind of you show. You were the number one show we, in America. We were number one show in the world by our third year. And in that third year, we spun off a female Hercules type show called Xena, yeah. but because if something's successful, Hollywood will copy everything, right? And yeah. I get it, it's, yeah. it's, it's like, well, let's do that. Let's do another zombie show, right? So that year when we spun up Xena, Sheena did come out at the same time, but also Conan, Robin Hood, Tarzan, Sinbad. Oh my gosh. Um, there was another one too. All these shows, uh, Beastmaster, all these shows that tried to copy what we had going, but we started it, so we were number one. I gotta brag about it, because I was honored to be part of that. We shot seven years in New Zealand. Yeah with an amazing cast and crew, and most of my crew, when we wrapped up in 2000, went on to do Lord of the Rings. And they went on to win Academy Awards and Oscars and everything. Well, God chose you for that moment in time, but your recent films have been decidedly Christian. Why, why did you move from well, Hollywood to sort of Jesus? I don't know if I necessarily moved that way. I've always been a Christian my whole life anyway, but um, it was 10 years ago in 2010 when Dallas Jenkins came to me with the script. Dallas is the son of Jerry Jenkins who yeah. wrote the Left Behind novel. Left Behind. And by the way, I'm doing the next two Left Behind movies, which I'm what? very excited. We're starting oh, filming this summer. The first one I'll be, I'll be directing it as well. Um, <clears throat> you got to bring Kirk Cameron in um, retirement. Yeah, we should. We should. Kirk is, was actually, we just left LA recently, but he was our neighbor in California for nice. many, many years, for the last 10 years. So, so he brought me the script and I read it. It's called What If? And it's a pure flicks movie. And I read the script and I said, who's playing Pastor Ben? And he goes, I don't know, man, we got, don't got a big budget for it. And I said, well, I want to play it. He goes, dude, I can't afford you. I said, I said <laughs> we got no budget for this. I said, I don't care. This script is unbelievable. It's awesome. I want to do it. So we did it. Nice. And um, uh, pure flicks at the time didn't really have a, they didn't have the, the funds or the, the, the plan to really get it out there. It's all about P&A. It's all about getting it out there and letting people know about it. So a couple years later, they came to me with God's Not Dead. And God's Not Dead, of course, they changed the ball game, and that thing went from a $2 million budget to a movie that made $140 million around yeah. the world. It's unbelievable. And, and a couple of sequels. But a couple of sequels. Um, but it was uh, really, it wasn't on purpose to get into that world, but I did want to, I, I, I loved doing those kind of movies. And you say faith-based, I kind of cringe that a little bit because every movie is a faith-based movie. Every movie has agenda. If you're an atheist, right. to believe in nothing, wow. That's a one heck of a. That's an agenda. That's one, that's, but that's one heck of a belief, isn't it? Yeah. To believe in absolutely nothing. Um, I feel sad for him, but uh, so I look at every movie as a faith-based movie. But I wanted to do movies that had values, that had morals, had you know, you, you got a chance for redemption. You get a Soul chance Surfer, for love. Soul the Sur Reliant. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, God is not dead. Abel's They're, Field. And now you have three if? three new yeah. movies coming out. I want to hear about Miracle in East, East Texas. Miracle in East Texas is our, my latest movie. I directed as well. Uh, written by the great Dan Gordon, who's an Oscar-nominated writer, great writer. 
It's about two con men played by myself and John Ratzenberger that would woo widows out of their money and fake oil. Wasn't oils. he in Cheers? He was in Cheers. That's great. He's the voice of every Pixar movie, too. <laughs> he's a yes. group of fish and Nemo. He's the, he's the truck and cars. I mean, they be using, they're like, a, that's, they're, that's, they're his good luck charm for um, John Ratzenberger. Uh, Lou Gossett Jr. is in the movie. Tyler Maine's in the movie. My wife, Sam Sorbo, is in the movie. And it's a Sam true Sorbo. Yes. Your wife is My in this wife. movie. That is. It is. I know we're talking right now, but she's right over there if you want to say hi. But anyway, <laughs> we'll anyway get to her. I know you will. And uh, it's a wonderful movie about these two guys that would, would scam women out of money on fake oil wells, but they strike oil. It ends up being the largest oil find in the history of the world. And this movie is hitting all the film festivals, doing so well. And we're hoping and praying we can get the, the money to get in the theaters. It's a true story summer. from the 1930s. True story set in 1930. Yeah. So these guys are in jail. We're yeah. going to roll a, a video clip, but set oh, up cool. this clip. Um, I don't know what clip it's going to be. It's, it's a trailer. trailer. It's a yeah, trailer yeah. for it, so it's a good clip because it's going to show you a wide variety of movie, like all trailers do. So I hope people enjoy it. And uh, it's one best romantic comedy. It's one best faith-based film. Judge's favorite. It, it sort of is covering everything at these film festivals. They can't throw it in one genre, which I love, because it's a movie for everybody. Here's a preview of Miracle in East Texas. a night at the movies as people will have. They will laugh, they will cry, and if they like westerns, that's icing on the cake. You guys are everywhere, like vampires. Welcome back. I'm here with Kevin Sorbo. So there's a happy ending to this story, but there's also a meaningful punchline. Um, well, the punchline to uh, Miracle in East Texas yeah. is that these guys would use, they would use Shakespeare quotes and biblical uh, passages to woo the widows. And my character, it bothers him more and more and more as the movie goes along, what he's doing. And he's feeling something, he knows, some, he knows what he's doing is wrong. And he's feeling a tug in his heart, and his soul, and his mind, his body. And in the last scam he does, um, he gives himself over to God. And six wow. months later goes by in the movie. It says, you put the tag up there six months later, and there he is preaching in a, in a church, marrying John Ratzenberger, his buddy in the movie, to the woman that he found to be his <laughs> wife. Thank so God. There's yeah, always redemption. There's always redemption. In, and that, that's what this movie has in it. It has redemption. Yeah. I like to see that. Let's take a short break. When we come back, he's got Climate Hustle 2 and also... Against the Tide, an apologetics movie after this. Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. How is your marriage doing? I want to tell you about an exciting new four-part video DVD Bible study series on God's plan for marriage. In this video series, we team up with marriage and family ministry expert Vince Dacchioli. There are a lot of things that get in the way of uh, our ability to have a healthy marriage, but with the way God intended it, He always wanted us to see His view of our relationship together. So everything we do when we talk about marriage or whether we're talking to men or whether we're talking to pastors and leaders, it all centers around this idea of vision. It's very important that we understand who God is and our relationship with Him is right in order for us to be able to live out really and truly Ephesians. And that also informs our role as men, how to love our wives. We can't really exactly. love them unless we understand the love of God. Exactly. So if you just think about love, you, we tend to think that love is an emotion. It's more uh, something that I feel, whereas the true definition of love, the way Jesus intended it, is, is not just an emotion, but it's, it's, a, it's charity, it's what I do. You know, to the degree that I am able to see my wife or my spouse through his eyes, that determines everything in my relationship. Yeah. And we go through the scriptures in four different parts. Part one is God's design for man and woman. Part two is godly roles for husband and wife. Three is sex and intimacy within godly marriage. And also God's plan for divorce. You wanna have this important 
four-part video series available for a suggested donation of $30 if you call our toll-free prayer line at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. You too can have a godly marriage. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by Kevin Sorbo, live at the NRB convention in Nashville. Uh, Kevin, you have a book here. Uh, I do. And your beautiful wife is on the cover. She Sam is. Sorbo, she's had me on her radio show a half a dozen times. Yeah. What is this? This is a book called True Faith. It's embracing adversity to live in God's light. And this is a follow-up book to my book, True Strength. And my book, True Strength, dealt with the end of season five in Hercules. I had, uh, unbeknownst to me, I had an aneurysm up here in my left subclavicle that had been growing or growing, spitting blood clots, slowing in my arm. I was having all kinds of problems with numbness and cold in my arm. Couldn't quite figure it out. Wow. And uh, when I came back to America, I was lived in New Zealand seven years, that's why I filmed the series. In the season five finished, I was coming back to the States to film, um, to, to promote my first big budget movie, Call the Conqueror, which is a prequel to Conan the Barbarian. So it was my first big budget movie with Universal. Um, I went to see my doctor, they found a lump. He said he wanted to do a biopsy on it. Before I did the biopsy, I went to my chiropractor. Now in eight years, he's never cracked my neck, ever, because I don't like my neck cracked, okay? Yeah. I'm laying on the table, a voice said, don't let him crack your neck. And I'm like, why am I hearing this voice? comes back urgent, don't let him crack your neck. Boom, he cracks my neck. <gasps> oh. That crack forced open that aneurysm, oh my sent gosh. hundreds of clots here, but sent three clots in my brain. I suffered three strokes. Oh my gosh. It took me three years to fully recover. I learned to walk again, to balance again, to talk again. Lost 10% of vision in both eyes. Lost a larger percent, but it came down to 10% later. And the book really is about, you know, look at the shape I was in on that series. I yeah. was a pretty ripped up guy. Yeah, yeah. And, we're all going to hit a roadblock. When are we going to hit that roadblock? We don't know. And a lot of people, when I do speaking events, I tell them, and I know people out there, everybody's got a story, right? And this is about not blaming God, not blaming family, friends, or the world, or whatever. Look in the mirror. That's, you got to look at yourself. Okay, this happened. What are you going to do about it? And you got to find a way to get, fight your way back. So True Faith now is really, it's, it's, it's a book about, uh, about marriage and how that you need faith in your marriage and the importance of faith in your marriage yeah. because everybody's got the same fights and the same battles in marriage. You we were really married do. At, that, at the time of that crisis? I was, no, I was four months away from being married at the time of, and of True Strength. she married you anyway. She married me anyway. She got the worst part of anything. A guy with three strokes. Before, before she said, <laughs> the pastor said for better or worse, she got the worst part first. Oh and my still gosh. stuck by my side. What a saint. Good job, Sam. So, <laughs> so, so True Faith now is the follow-up to that book, and that True Strength came out, my gosh, it's already eight years ago it came out, and uh, we decided to write this one to really say, you know what, the ups and downs of marriage are what they are, but you really need faith to help you get through those things, because, uh, you know, we, divorce has become such a normal thing, just like abortion has, and these yeah. are two things that we have to, 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 to change. How many years now you've been married? 22 years. When, 22 we, when we had 10 years, I said, that's like a golden anniversary in Hollywood. Yeah. So, yeah. Every anniversary, she looks at me and she says, I'll give you one more year. <laughs> so. That's pretty impressive. So you got this new thing coming out, the sequel to Climate Hustle 1 is yes. called? Uh, Climate Hustle 2. Hey, I guessed it. <laughs> so what is this about? Well, it's, it's, it's once again to battle with, with humor and truth. I know a lot of people hate truth and facts. Another thing people hate. Um, uh, about the reality of what's going on on our planet and in our, in, our, in, in, in the whole thing about, you know, we're just hoping we can get as rich as Al Gore got off his thing. Oh my <laughs> Cause gosh. it's unbelievable, the scare that they want us in. I mean, I look at the press all the time. They want to keep you in fear constantly all the time. And the billions of dollars we spent on, on climate change. Look, I'm all for saving the planet. It's like, I'm not against saving the planet. Yeah. Um, you want an electric car? Sure. But you know what? They're operated by coal. Where do you get coal? I mean, yeah. a, so the, the like the, it shows the hypocrisy. Yeah. It shows these very wealthy um, celebrities, uh, you know, getting in these commercials and then shows them getting in the limo, driving to the airport, private airport, and getting on a G5 and flying away. Yeah. I mean, the hypocrisy is so much there. And Al Gore is doing the same thing all that time, jet setting everywhere. Yeah. And they're big, massive <laughs> houses. Look, I don't, I'm all for capitalism. I'm a, pro, I'm a guy that you, you came here for for the American dream, and now we're trying to destroy the American dream. And that's the whole tangent I'm getting off on, but it's crazy to me that it's changed so much that now it's like, if you're successful, how dare you, how dare you become successful? Like this Greta woman, little girl, using her, she's pointing a finger at America. We're like 0.03% of what's going on. We are so good in our country. Yeah. People are so good at recycling and doing what they're doing. They need to look at other countries that are doing most of it. China's yeah. not doing great, India. India's not doing great. Yeah. I mean, okay, you wanna go, go after people, you know, clean up the earth, you have that right there, but give me a break. 
with so we what's have going a, on. We have a trailer. I think Please it's just a 30-second clip. I think it's 30 seconds, yeah. Climate Hustle 2 with Kevin Sorbo. Nearly every day, we hear dire predictions about climate change from the media establishment, Hollywood, and politicians. They tell us that the world is coming to an end because normal human activity is raising the temperature to dangerous levels. To avoid a hellish apocalypse, they warn us we must immediately change our lifestyles and our very way of life. But are these sensational claims based on solid empirical science? Do the facts line up with the hype? Well, an increasing number of scientists are becoming skeptical. We covered what many of these scientists had to say in our first groundbreaking film, Climate Hustle. From overhyped claims about severe weather events, temperatures, rising sea levels, and even disappearing polar bears. Climate Hustle peeled back the hype and looked at the facts. Facts that simply don't add up to any reason for alarm. So this begs the questions. Why would those claiming a global warming catastrophe spread a false narrative? What would motivate them? Why would they try to hustle you? Are they trying to control the climate or you? Well, those are the questions we're going to explore in this film. And the answers may shock you. Don't miss this important film, Climate Hustle 2. Welcome back. So that is uh, a, a, a fun way to look at a serious problem. Yeah. But it, it's coming out in theaters. People can literally buy tickets now. April 21st. If they, if they go to that website, climatehustle2.com. That's what it is, right? I'm asking everybody off camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah Just you making know. sure I do it right. <laughs> we, climatehustle2.com. We, we have it on the crawl. Just go there and I buy, love your, it. it's buy right your here. tickets now. <laughs> <laughs> it's an important statement, and, and well, I'm it, proud of you for it, making it's, it. Yeah, it's just, let's... Let's look at both sides, guys. This, they have such a power with the media, just shoving it down your throats. They've been doing it for 40 years now. I mean, we were supposed to be flooded in Florida and California 20 years ago. They're saying by the year 2000, you know, then they went, oh, it's yeah. 2010. It used to be, you know, global warming. And then when it, we got so many cold winters, they changed it that, well, it's climate change. Like, well, it's called weather. It's called seasons. That's These right. are the things that happen. And it's not human caused. You know? <laughs> Let's take a short break. When we come back, Kevin has a new movie, Against the Tide. It's an apologetics movie for Jesus and the Bible. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. I'm Dr. Chaps. You know, some people are worried that we're losing our country, but they ask, how can we take a stand? We have produced now these two effective resources for you, a DVD video series and a book. Yours for a suggested donation of just $50, and we will offer you four videos on this disc to teach you how to become an effective Christian activist. For example, how did I send five million petitions to Congress? How did we organize and change bad laws or policies in 13 states? How did I run and win a seat in the Colorado legislature? We will also offer you this 30-day prayer manual, How to Liberate the World in 30 Days. They're both yours for a suggested donation of just $50. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, or write to the address on your screen, or better yet, pick up the phone and call us at 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. You can learn the easy steps to take back your country. Call us today. How can you discern the thoughts in your own mind from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit, or from angels, or from invisible demons? we've created a 17 part video Bible study on a four disc DVD set. This important Bible study series goes through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. How did Jesus discern the spirits? How did the apostle Paul discern the spirits? What does the Old Testament say about demons and the Holy Spirit and angels? We're offering a discount today while supplies last. It used to be $99. Now it's just a suggested donation of $50. You get the entire four disc set and you learn how to discern the Holy Spirit, angels and demons, every mention in the Bible. Call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Or visit our website or write to the address on your screen. You can learn to discern the spirits. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, live at NRB, Nashville, Tennessee, with Kevin Sorbo, my new favorite movie star. <laughs> so, I wanna give a shout out to my friend, Dr. Patrick Johnson, who, mm -hmm. who directed, wrote The Reliant, Reliant 
they worked so hard for yeah. so many years to try and get distribution on that, and, mm -hmm. and your character really brought that movie to life. What do you remember? Um, had a blast doing it. Shot up there outside of Columbus, Ohio, and um, I, I, loved, I loved the script. I mean, I think they wanted my part to be a little bit bigger, but I was filming a movie at the same time. Yes. So in a four-day window, I could do this. So I was can I say that your character died in that movie? You can say I died, sure. But, oh there's, but, there's, but it comes back. I mean, they, they have flashbacks right, throughout, right. The, throughout the movie. But, uh, you know, it, it really is, it deals with the economic collapse of America. And um, you see what goes on in other countries. You see what's going on in Venezuela. You see what's going on in, in Hong Kong and all these places. So uh, if, if that really happened in America, it makes sense that these things would happen, right? Yeah. So my family, which is a God-fearing family in the movie, gets attacked by a bunch of thugs. And they got guns and weapons. And shocked to find out that as Christians, we have guns and weapons too. Right. We fire back. So it's a, it certainly is a pro-Second Amendment movie. It, it's there. I mean, it doesn't talk about it, but it, it shows you right there that, yeah. you know, that the reason our forefathers put that in the, uh, in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and everything was there was a reason for that. And, it, was, and, it, and it wasn't to go hunting. The whole idea was that they knew that our country one day would be up against a tyrannical government. Yeah. And we got it kind of going right now on one side that's going on right now. You can now, find so. The Reliant yeah. now. I think it's coming out on DVD. But I want to finish with this new uh, yes, we'll uh, apologetics movie you're making against, against the, the Tide. tide. Yeah. It's a wonderful movie. It's a documentary I shot three weeks in Oxford, England with John Lennox. We shot two weeks in Israel. And John Lennox is a retired math professor. He's a brilliant man. He's got five different degrees. And he, uh, all, his, all through his life, while he's even teaching and, and beyond, he's, he's an apologist. And he's debated all the great atheists of the world, from, from um, Hitchens and Dawkins and Stephen Hawking. And this, really, this, this documentary is really a, a, a teaching guide it's the true version of God's Not Dead. Yeah, it, exactly. Yeah. It's a te perfect. It's yeah. a teaching guide and a, and a kind weapon for you to have to have a solid debate against the atheists and agnostics of the world that whether they come at you with anger or kindness themselves, want to know and understand why we believe the way we believe. So it's a wonderful teaching guide, and I think every pastor and every church in the world needs to get this documentary and pass it on to their congregants. Against the tide, is it going to yeah. hit theaters or DVD or how? how, are, how are we're we're in the well. We're going to hope to do everything. We're hoping it, the Fathom event would be great, but we hope to get it in the theaters, and nice. obviously we'll do the streaming afterwards. And you know, there's a couple of places out there that are already interested in to see what happens after we get a theatrical run on it. Let me ask you about your personal faith, and we have just three mm -hmm. minutes left. But okay. somebody out there grew up watching <clears> you when they were a kid, and you inspired a lot of people, and thank you for doing that. But what is your inspiration? How does, where does Jesus come into your life, and why do you do all this? You know, I grew up uh, in typical Minnesota, in Scandinavian, we're Lutherans. Um, I, I went to a non-denominational church after that for years when I got into college and beyond. Uh, but it was, it was always in me. It was always there. There was one in, very huge moment in my life when I was uh, 13 years old where our our church took us to see uh, the Reverend Billy Graham speak at the St. Paul Fairgrounds. There would be 250,000 people there. Just the, the, the amount of people and listening to him speak, it was just goosebump night the whole night. It was a hot August night in Minnesota. The full moon was out. I was moved to go up and talk to one of his volunteers afterwards. So I worked my way up through the crowd, got up there, sitting on the grass, just talking. We weren't praying yet or anything. We were just talking. And all of a sudden, a hand went on my head, and I turned around, and there was Billy Graham. Oh, my gosh. And But his head was perfectly behind the moon. So this. This light, this, oh, <laughs> it was just, it was just weird. Oh, it was unbelievable. <laughs> and so I, I, I told that story, and then Chicken Soup for the Soul calls me up, and they said, the people at Billy Graham love that story, and we're doing a hardcover book for Billy Graham, because they, they always only did paperback. The only hardcover they've ever done was for Billy Graham. So I wrote the chapter in there, that my, one of the 101 chapters, I wrote mine, and then his PR team out of Dallas calls me up and says, um, he would love for you, because he was well into his 90s, and he said, we'd love for you to go out and do the publicity on this book. But you prayed to receive honored. Christ at that Billy Graham crusade? Um, I had, no, you know, we prayed, but I was, I was already there. But that was just a moment, I think, that just yeah, reaffirmed. Solidified. Yeah, just solidified it. I've never been a not a Christian. I've not, I'm, I'm hardly a perfect person. I've done a lot of stupid things that I know God's forgiven me, but I'm having a hard time forgiving myself, you know yeah. what I mean? So um, I don't go around and pretend I'm holier than thou than anybody. But it's, and I think it's, it's that, that whole adage, right? Look at, the, look at the log on your own eye. But um, it, it was huge for me, and I've always been there. And I, I hate to say I've, I'm reborn, because I don't ever feel I was reborn, because my belief system is always You know, Billy Graham's there. wife said the same thing, that she was never born again. She was just always a Christian growing up. Yeah. 
Isn't that interesting? Yeah. But I want to pray with somebody out there who is inspired, and I wonder if you would join me maybe in a word of prayer. Sure. Father in heaven, we ask your blessing now on all of these movies, all these projects that, that Kevin is into. Father, we pray that the gospel of Jesus mm. Christ will shine through in every message, that, that the story of redemption, uh, whether overtly spoken or, or covertly implied, will, will shine through into people's hearts so they will turn their life over to Jesus in some new way, even if they've been a Christian their whole life. Father, we pray now that you would be the boss of our heart, that you would come into our lives and fill us with your love. Amen. I pray your blessing on Kevin and all these projects and Sam and, and everything they're doing for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, I'll give you the last word. That. The last word? Yep. I, I thank God for the road he's led me on because I think the strokes that I have were a blessing because it, it, it put me on a different path in my life, a different direction in my life in the movies I do. And these movies are a tool that are incredible. People have a hard time. We're supposed to harvest, right? But the churches are starting to close off. I tell pastors all the time, you work for God, you don't work for government. Yeah. And we're so crazy in our PC world about, about uh, working our, our congregants down to a manageable size because we don't want to offend anybody anymore. You know what? Politics and religion are together. They are the same thing. Separation of church and state was written by Jefferson to keep government out of churches. And yep. the Democrats have done an amazing job of flipping that around. We're supposed to be out there harvesting. I'm glad that my movies are able to do that. I've had people of non-faith and faith, I've had Muslims come up to me and say, your movies have made me become a Christian. Wonderful. And it's unbelievable what these, these are amazing tools. Please support the movies that have come out in the Christian faith world. Uh, the scripts are getting better and better all the time. The production value is as good as anything out there. We just don't have the special effects of an Avengers movie, but we don't need it. We got God. Amen. <laughs> Our website is PrayInJesusName.org. Again, PrayInJesusName.org. Please sign a petition or donate when you visit. If you need prayer today, call us at 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. I'm Dr. Chaps. I have two exciting announcements. For those of you who found us maybe one day a week, did you know we're on five days a week with in-depth analysis and Christian news reporting and we pray the news. Where else are you gonna see that? Here's the exciting news. We're now on Apple TV. We're on five days a week on this exciting new streaming platform, Apple TV. Maybe you've already found us on Roku or Amazon Fire, but Apple TV, look for PIJN News in the spirituality category. And here's my other breaking news. Did you know we're also on podcast? Well, what's a podcast? Well, you can listen to us five days a week on audio, maybe when you're working out at the gym or driving in your car. You can watch the video on your smartphone. Visit iTunes and look for PIJN News. We're also on 10 on-demand platforms. Visit PrayInJesusName.org to find them all. And did I mention it's absolutely free? Other people charge a fee, but ours is free. Subscribe today to PIJN News. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.